Hello, italki teachers. Today, I'm going to teach you how to create a simple curriculum from scratch. This is one of the most common questions I get in terms of lesson planning and creating a curriculum for italki teachers. So today I'm going to break it down step by step how I create a simple curriculum for my students. And at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about what this is useful for and what it is not useful for. All right, so hit the subscribe button and let's begin. Number one, the first thing that I want you to consider is what level your students are. And the best way to do this is to look at the CEFR reference, or if you're, if you want to, and you're from Canada, you could even look at the CLB reference. But today, let's focus on the CEFR, since we're more familiar with that. So you're going to have to choose if you want to make a curriculum for A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, or C2 students. The reason why we categorize students this way is because our curriculum is not one size fits all. We're probably going to need to tailor it for specific students of a specific level. So what level are your students? Well, if you're an English teacher, it's likely that a lot of your students are at the lower to high intermediate level and even advanced. So you may be looking at B1, B2, or even C1 uh, learning categories. However, if you're a teacher who teaches a different language, for example, Portuguese or Spanish or French, these learners may be at a lower level um, on the CEFR reference, which means that you will likely be looking for A2 or even A1 material. So according to the CEFR, the B1 level um, student has the ability to express himself in a limited way in familiar situations and to deal in a general way with non-routine information. So if you're interested in finding out more about the CEFR levels, simply go online and do a quick Google search and have a look at the guidelines and some activities. Um, you will learn more about the CEFR and how your students fit into this, these categories as you gain more experience. This information is really going to help us with step two, which is choosing your topics. And for me, this is the most fun because this is where we really add life to the curriculum. For example, I am very interested in social sciences, right? But I realized at a certain point that some of my students are more interested in natural sciences and, or, or computer science, and this is actually not completely relevant to them. At the same time, we need to find a mixture between different interests of our different students. Otherwise, you're going to be creating a specific curriculum for each student. And if you want to do that, that's absolutely fine, but it may be a, li a little bit more time consuming. So maybe you want to get started, but you don't know exactly where to start. So the first thing we should go to is B1 ESL topics or even British Council ESL topics. That's my uh, kind of go-to right there. And what we'll be able to do is have a look at some of these um, some of these topics right here. We have things like yoga, like environment day, um, holy and Ramadan, right? So you can see right here that we're getting into more advanced level topics and we're not just talking about surface level topics, but more, um, th there is more nuance to the these topics. And that is, uh, that's going to make class a lot more interesting for you and your students. However, I suggest that you narrow it down to about 10 topics just to get started, or even five. And if you could just throw this into a Google Doc, it's a start. For example, have a look at this simple Google Doc that I made. Um, this has a little outline of the different topics that I have here, such as storytelling, finances, fashion, these are things that I found interesting, but they're also mixed with things that I think my students will find interesting. And they're meant to branch out into other relevant topics as well. Canada, I had business up there as well. 
So these are different grammar and vocabulary categories that I have matched to the different topics. This will take a little bit of critical thinking and I think this is the most difficult part of creating a curriculum. It's actually matching the different grammar or vocabulary items, you know, the building blocks of speech um, or strategies as well um, for fluency, for example, with the particular topic. The importance here is to actually add a little bit of structure to the lesson because what we're doing is finding a specific goal, a learning outcome that we need for each lesson. And that way, both the teacher and the student know where they are going and what the ultimate goals are. So every teacher has a different philosophy. And maybe for you as a teacher and for your students, grammar should not be the central focus. Well, in that case, vocabulary is probably a great place to go. So if you're looking for vocabulary, collocations are words that we tend to put together. Usually they don't have specific rules. So let's be clear here. Today, it's all about starting, getting started and creating a plan for your students. As time goes on, you're going to understand more about vocabulary, more about grammar, and what is necessary for students of different levels. Here are a few resources to get you started. My go-to for vocabulary is ESL7. Uh, they have thousands of vocabulary words and many vocabulary lists here. I also like to use ESL7 for um, collocations, actually. Um, yeah, so this is a really good, these are some great exercises to use with your intermediate level students. Of course, you could tailor this to where your students are from, for example, or which language you're teaching. And if you're going for grammar, you can, you can get started with BBC um, English Grammar. And there are a few, you know, topics here. So at least it could get you better versed with grammar and it could kind of give you a little bit of direction. Another thing that you may need to take into consideration is that a lot of students do not line up to a specific level. That means that learning is not always completely linear. So a student may not have acquired a certain grammar topic from A2 level, but they may actually have some basic understanding of a grammar topic in B2 level. These are all just rough guidelines and we need to remember that. So as you get to know your students a little bit better, it may be useful for you to kind of play around with these grammar topics a little bit. And if you believe that a student has good enough proficiency with a particular vocabulary item or grammar topic, then instead opt for teaching a different item for that day. There is an endless supply of things to learn. All right, before we wrap up here, let's talk about what this syllabus is and what it is not. So number one, this is a rough guide for your students. This is to show your students that you have some sort of plan and some sort of direction. However, you are also showing your students that you have enough understanding of your language that you are open to change if need be. And I really suggest that other language teachers are open to change, tweaking the curriculum and tailoring it for your specific students need. Now let's talk about what it is not. This is not an in-depth, complex um, curriculum. In the future, I'll talk about some of the curricula that I have used, that I have developed, which is a little bit more intensive. Another thing that this is not, this is not a specialized curriculum. Um, this is for general English, for reading, writing, speaking, listening, four category um, classes. This is not for IELTS prep, it is not for business English. However, you could feel free to develop those plans as well. Also, if, you, if your niche is related to your culture, for example, you could cr create a curriculum based on that as well. The possibilities are endless. So we found a way to go from point A to point B. This will get you through your first 10 classes with each student, hopefully. In future videos, I'll talk about how I lesson plan and the different ways that you could create your own lesson. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. It really helps out the channel. And until next time, keep smiling.